What's going on guys? My name's Caleb Schrackengast. This is Buffalo Creek Outdoors. I'm back up here at Grafton Archery. Today's video is going to be a comparison between the brand new Matthews Lift 29 and a half and the Matthews Phase 4 29. Let's get into it. Let's just go ahead and jump on into the score sheets because the way my new score sheets work, this will kind of uh, talk about all these key points that I want to hit on. So let's talk about shootability for these two bows. For shootability on the lift, I've got it as a, score, a six and then shootability on the phase four, I've got at a five and a half. Reason behind that, 29 and a half inches axle to axle, 29 and three quarter inch riser length. 29 inches axle to axle on the phase four and 29 inches on the riser length on the phase four. Another difference you'll still notice is that the reflex on the lift is at two inches and the reflex on the phase four was at like three, let's see, three and a sixteenth is what I measured. Just based on whether or not you think any of those specs make a hill of beans on accuracy, I will say that the lift in my opinion, feels like a much longer bow than the phase four. When I'm at full draw on both of these bows, to me, the lift feels like a longer axle to axle bow. Take that for what it's worth. That's just what it feels like to me. Next, let's talk about tunability. So for both of these bows, I've got them scored at a six. The reason behind that is everything is gonna be identical uh, as far as the adjustability on these two bows and the options that you have. Uh, where you'll kind of get into the differences, we'll talk about here in a minute, but as far as adjustability, tunability, you, got, you can adjust your cams left and right with the top hat system, have to have a press, both bows are gonna get a one. Uh, neither bow have the option to adjust or tighten or lock down their limb pockets, so zero there. Draw length. These bows are both going to be adjustable in half inch increments. They're both going to require an individual mod. So whatever your draw length is, whatever let off you want, whatever draw weight you want, you're going to have to figure that out before you buy the bow, or at least if you change your mind, you're going to have to buy an individual mod to change that. The phase four is still going to be working off the cross centric cams with the sw switch weight technology. The new um, lift cams are the switch weight X uh, technology and these cams are completely redesigned. As far as the adjustability though and tunability, they're going to be pretty much identical. The grip on either one of these, if I were to shoot either one of them would come off. So it's kind of like a ne negligible uh, difference if there is a difference. I don't hate the Matthews grips. I just don't necessarily care for them the best. Uh, if I were to shoot either one of these bows, it would either be with side plates or I'd probably put one of the UV grips on here. Uh, but there are good options for grips. The grips are not adjustable on the bow though, so they both get a one. Let off, uh, they are adjustable. The let off is adjustable, but like I talked about just a minute ago, you're gonna have to adjust that with a specific, a specific module. Uh, it's not like, say, the Hoyts where you have all that adjustability on the cam, but there are benefits to having the individual mods set up like they are. The, way, the reason that Matthews does that is because at each draw length, you're getting optimal performance out of these, mod, out of these mods and cams. You'll notice that in shorter draw lengths a lot, especially for somebody like me with a 27-inch draw. The Matthews overall tend to shoot about 7 inch, or uh, they tend to shoot faster speeds at shorter draw lengths because of the way the mod system is developed. All right, so for timing, I didn't even think about this before. I've got both of these bows scored at a one because you, I was in, the, in my mind, I was thinking you had to have a press to adjust these bows. And I would still recommend do, using a press to adjust the timing on these bows. But in a pinch, you can also use the SAS system. So you could kind of put this either way. You could go uh, a two point on both of these bows for timing if you wanted to use the SAS system. That's not what I would recommend. That's mainly meant to be used in a pinch. Uh, so we'll just score both of these bows as a one. Strings and cables. 
I gave it a two because of the SAS system. If you had to change your strings of cables, if you busted something, whatever it is, on and you're out on the road, and all you have is that SAS system, you wouldn't have to have a press, and you could do what you have to do with that. So I scored both of these bows at a two. They both have the option for integrated rest, and they both have the option for the bridge lock sights. So that's two and two. For a total of, uh, let's see, that gives both of these bows a six on tunability. All right, so for draw cycle, this is where you're gonna start getting into some of the differences in these bows. This is gonna be pretty opinionated, guys, because it's gonna be all about what you want in a draw cycle. In my opinion, the lift and the new Switchweight X cam has a smoother draw cycle than the Phase 4 29 does. Now, I've heard people back and forth on this. I've heard some guys say they thought the Phase 4 had a smoother draw. In my opinion, the Phase 4 has more of a drop, more of a, a hump to get over on the backside, and the Switchweight X cam is more smooth all the way back. With that being said, I can see where some people are like talking about the differences, and maybe it feels like you're drawing slightly less weight on the Phase 4 versus the lift, but in my opinion, the difference in the smoothness of the draw way overweighs the slight, uh, maybe a maybe slightly stiffer draw. It's kind of hard to explain the difference between these because they're so close, but really in a hunting aspect for me, the biggest thing is on the phase four when you draw back, it feels like you hit that wall and it just kind of boom, drops off. Whereas in my opinion on the lift, you draw it back and it's just more smooth all the way back. I gave the draw cycle an eight, a score of an eight on the lift and a seven on the phase four. Letdown, I feel like the lift, you're holding more weight all the way down. It's slightly smoother of a letdown, in my opinion, than the phase four was. The phase four, once again, still feels like you have that, that where you're in the valley and then all of a sudden it wants to pull. Uh, and it's harder to hold that back. On the lift, it just feels like as soon as you let out of it, you're holding back. So it's smoother on the letdown, in my opinion, but they're not far enough apart to give it a different score, so I gave both of them a seven. Back wall on both of these bows, uh, I gave the, the Phase 4 a seven on back wall. It wasn't that great, in my opinion. It was decent last year, uh, but there is some sponge in that wall whereas the lift is rock solid. This is by far the best back wall that a Matthews has had that I, as far as I know, and I really, really like how solid that back wall is on the lift. All right, so for noise and vibration, I gave both of these bows a five for noise. I gave the phase four a four on vibration. I gave the lift a five on vibration. In my opinion, the, the lift had less felt vibration and what vibration you did have in the shot seemed like it dissipated a little bit faster than what the Phase 4 had last year. Uh, that being said, the Phase 4 by no means has a ton of vibration. It's still a 4 out of 5, uh, just not quite as good as the lift. The lift is excellent, in my opinion, as far as dissipating the vibration. Uh, Speed-wise, this is where you're going to start noticing where the difference in the cams uh, are. Uh, and I'll have all these graphs and charts on the screen, so you'll be able to see all this as well. Uh, so between the two, so at the a 350 grain arrow, 27 inch draw, 70 pounds, I got 300 feet a second on the phase four and 310 feet a second on the lift. There's your difference in speed, about 10 feet a second. At 30 inch draw, I got 330 on the phase four and 334 on the lift not quite as big of a difference. But for guys like myself with the shorter draw length, that's where you're gonna start noticing the lift maintains its speed through the shorter draw, cycle, draw lengths, in my opinion, than the phase four did. So for speed, uh, I gave the phase four eight and a half on uh, total out of 10, and the lift a nine and a half out of 10. For the weight, this is more than likely the first thing you're going to notice when you pick the phase four up and then you pick the lift up. The entire system on the lift is just built for being lightweight at 3.99 pounds versus 4.48 pounds. 
once again, those numbers really don't sound that far apart, but when you pick them up, it is a huge difference, in my opinion, between the Phase 4 and the Lift, and this is where the Lift really starts to outshine the Phase 4. I gave a 6.5 to the Phase 4 and a 9.5 to the Lift based on the chart, and like I said, the charts will be on the screen. Balance, I gave a 4 on the Phase 4 and a 5 on the Lift. The Lift, in my opinion, is just so balanced in my hand. Integrated accessories, these are both going to get a 5. They all have the same identical accessories. Not going to get too far into that. And then price, both of these bows are rated, listed at the same price, $1,200. Uh, so they're both going to get a 6 on that. So for that, for the totals on the scores, uh, that's going to total out to 71 and a half on the phase four and 82 on the lift. In my opinion, if you have a phase four and you love it and you shoot great with it and you just don't, you don't have any reason to switch, you're not carrying the bow, you're not worried about the speed, whatever it may be, if you're not really looking to switch bows, it may not be worth the switch to the lift. With that being said, if you're not 100% happy with your phase four, come shoot this lift because this, this lift feels, in my opinion, nothing like the phase four. They're both Matthews. They're both roughly the same length platform at 29 and a half and 29 inches, six inch brace heights. Like they're all, they're very similar. I like the draw cycle better on the lift. I like the feel and the balance and the shot and everything else better on the lift. I wasn't overly impressed last year on the phase four. I am super impressed with the lift. Do I think it's worth the money for the lift over the phase four? Yes, 100%. If you've got a phase four, it's gonna kind of be up to you. If I had a phase four, I'm just telling you from my experience, if I had a phase four, I would definitely sell it and buy a lift way different bow, way different platform. I like this platform much, much better. I think this is the best bow. Uh, the Lift series is the best bow that Matthews has came out with in a long time, in my opinion. Uh, so for guys, where I think these bows are gonna shine, shorter draw length guys, the Lift is gonna have more speed. I think the draw cycle is nicer. Back wall is much nicer. Uh, felt vibration is less. The riser is much longer, uh, and just the platform in general is just set up for balance and speed and uh, accuracy. Where the Phase 4 is going to shine, if you can find a used Phase 4 at a really good price, it may be worth it. Um, it's a great bow, don't get me wrong, I'm not down in the Phase 4, but I think the lift is better in all aspects. I don't see any reason why the phase four would be considered a better bow than the lift. Just from shooting the two, I enjoy shooting this bow much better. Take it for what it's worth, guys. That's just all my opinion. And then I've tried to put some hard facts down to uh, make the review a little bit less opinionated, but when it boils down to it, reviews are gonna be opinionated. There's no way around it. And guys that say there's no opinion in it, uh, you know, it's. It's not, I'm not saying they're lying, but it's just so hard to shoot a bow and not automatically get back into, okay, I like this because of this. It's not hard facts, um, but hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully you got something out of the video, guys. If there's anything that you want to uh, ask me, comment down below and let me know. Uh, don't hesitate to call these guys up at Grafton Archery at 704-855-1300. They'll be more than happy to help you. They can help you with anything archery related. With that being said, guys, please like and subscribe. Please comment down below. It really helps my channel out. And if you enjoy the content, please come back and uh, continue to watch. So thanks for watching, guys. Remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. We'll catch you on the next video.